Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So as I sat here, I'm, as I'm coming to my wife, I know she's going to have something to share with you. But as I sat here, what I saw to, over the city of Barstow, at first it was like a big tent, like a white tent that, the, that, that was placed over the city. And then what had happened was kind of like, I don't know how many uh, intervals or separations between them, but then I, I saw what would be angels holding on to the, si to the sides of this big tarp. And in the middle, I was thinking, is this the presence of the Lord? And the answer is yes, it's the presence of the Lord. But in the very top, that's why it looked like a tent. If you look like a, uh, at like a circus tent, right? They've got the, the real top part really high, and then it comes down. But at the top part, I saw pastor and sister and the children at the top. And what I was led to believe in the spirit was that God has placed the right person in the city. And that, and that because... Because of care, it's so interesting, because of care that God has placed in your heart and the passion and the drive and the burden and the calling, God has given you an anointing with angels that set all around bringing down his presence to the city of Barstow. In Jesus' name. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to hand it right over to my wife. I, I know she'll have some, some good words for you to say. And I'm not sure if, I don't always see these visions, but, but Sister Gum sees them all the time. So hopefully it, I didn't steal your thunder and Jesus shared it with you as well. But if you would greet the, the congregation. <laughs> Praise the Lord. God is good. There's something powerful is going to come to the city of Barstow <laughs> and its surroundings. I feel the Holy Ghost. Because there's a purpose and a reason why your church is called the Apostolic Lighthouse. We all know what the lighthouse is, right? That means there's light coming out. And it's beaming, but it's strong, it's powerful. Every single one of you, every single one of you, are, is the lighthouse. Say, I am the lighthouse. So guess what? What that means? You are the revival. Hallelujah. Now Hallelujah. Say, to, say to yourself, I am revival. I am revival. God is going to use me Hallelujah. to revive this city. Amen. 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 He's going to use our voices. Amen. And you no longer have to have fear. You will no longer have to be afraid what to speak or how to speak it. God gave us the words. God gives us what that we need to say to someone that's in need. Have the confidence. Tonight at the altar, I want every single one of you to come to the front. We're going to pray over you. We're going to anoint you with oil. Because God's going to give you the boldness and the confidence for you to walk on this city in the Barstow City. Do you believe it? Yes. Amen. Amen. Let's worship the Lord. Hallelujah, Father. Hallelujah, Lord. We receive your word, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Wow, there's so much blessings. And it's funny when you said that because about the same time I saw that, I was like, man, it's like a light switch. God has turned on the light in the city. This is great. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, it does go back about five years. Uh, the, the first time that I remember us speaking to each other about potentially coming and being with you, it was at a men's conference, I believe, at El, in El Monte. We were standing in line to get some food, no, nonetheless. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> but I remember, and, and you, you had said to me, one of these days, I'd like to have you guys come out. And I was like, all right. So every time I see, or as often as I, I remembered, I would say, hey, man, can't wait to see you. One day we're going to be there. And like, we're going to have you. But what a blessing it is to come and to be with your people, your leadership, and even you all. You all, uh, the way you prayed in the altars, the way you guys came together, um, I know that stems down. I mean, the church is what it is because of the head, because of the shepherd, because of the, the, the angel that God has placed here, the family that God has orchestrated to be the instrument to be used. And so I know you all just glean from your pastors, and they're, they're wonderful, beautiful people, and we appreciate them. <laughs> uh, 
Hallelujah, Jesus. Now, not to get too far ahead, um, but uh, I do want to share, make sure I get to the right, right one here, is um, that today I do come with, a, with a, a simple, a quick and simple yet powerful word from the Lord. Uh, so don't stay too far, Sister Piano, okay? Because uh, God's going to move quickly. Uh, when, when the Lord gives me a word, I've learned to just share the word, no matter how short, no matter how small, no matter how, because God's the big part of it all, right? God's the big part of it all. He likes to take the little and to make much out of it. And it's funny, Sister Gums about stole my message in a second here. She said, when you come up front, and I said, man, that's my whole message. When you come up front, I said, all right, here, you just go ahead, girl. Um, but we are truly happy and excited to be with you guys. And I think I've seen some of the faces before. Brother, were you at, what's your name again, brother, on the corner here? Brother, brother DJ? Eugene. Were you at the Empire Conference? Yeah, I remember at the, at the Empire Conference. I don't know if you've shared it with anybody. Um, but I remember you were prophesied over. Uh, and it was to do with evangelism, yeah? Something along about evangelism and the Lord's going to use you. And as I sat here and worshiped, I said, there's the man. I said, there's the, the evangelism come through. You're going to win a lot of souls, brother. That was, that was the prophecy in Jesus' name. Thank God for the word. Amen? Amen. Okay, so uh, it's a quick work today. I'm old. I got my glasses on. Amen? And the old people are like, what? You got gray hair, but you're younger than that, right? Okay. All right, in Jesus' name. Uh, let's all stand if we will. I'm going to read out of the scriptures, Matthew 25, <clears throat> verses 1 through 13. And truly, truly, at the end of the service today, we invite everybody to come up front. Truly, the Lord is going to have a way-changing moment. And it's simply because one step in front of the other. That's what faith is. When I think about faith, you know, some of the reasons why we don't step out of our comfort zones is because of the unfamiliarity of it. Imagine if we had so much boldness that we never came to church without bringing a visitor. Imagine, man, I am not going Sunday night until I pick someone up. Imagine. But see, here's the thing. Faith is that simplicity of just putting one foot out in front of the other and believing that there is ground there. But here's, what, here's what's going to happen is as you utilize that faith, when you walk, you don't think about whether there's ground in front of you. Why? Reason of use. Since you were a baby, you just kept putting one foot in front of the other. And after a while, you're like, you don't even think about it. I'm going to walk. And that's what's going to happen when you utilize your faith. Everybody say amen. amen. I'm going to read from the, the scriptures, Matthew 25, verse 1 through 13. <clears throat> then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were wise. Five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and they all slept. At midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out and meet him. Then arose all the virgins, and they trimmed their lamps. The foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. I can imagine someone trying to... Have you ever had someone try to take something from you? Like, man, this is mine. You cannot have this. Imagine. They wanted their oil. Talk about... I'm going to get to the lazy part. But the wise answered, saying, Not so lest there, there not be enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. They had money. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage. And the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord. These are the foolish ones. Open to us. 
But he answered. How interesting that he still responded. But he answered and said, Verily or truly I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Tonight I'm talking about I'm keeping my vessels full. We got them. They're with our lamps. We've got vessels. Amen? Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, by the authority and the power of your word, Lord, I thank you for the hearts, Lord Jesus, that have come prepared. I thank you, Jesus, for your word that has already been equipped. I pray, God, that you would transform, Lord Jesus, a newness in us tonight, a refreshing, a reviving, Lord God, in us tonight. Spiritually bless us, Lord Jesus, and renew us with supernatural strength, God. I plead your blood upon this service, Lord, and we expect deliverance. We expect miracles, Lord Jesus. By the authority and the power of your word, we plead your blood tonight. Everybody say, in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Now listen, I'm not playing when I said I come with the quick and simple but yet powerful word. <clears throat> we're going to get to the altars, but the great thing is we're going to get to the altars to change. Amen? Amen. Two things are going to happen tonight. First, those who do not have the Holy Ghost and yet want him in their hearts are going to receive it with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. You're going to know today that he lives in your heart. Amen? You are those who will have new oil today. Hallelujah. Remember when we got the oil? It's coming for those today that, that are going to receive his spirit. Secondly, those of the body of Christ, those who have his spirit, tonight when you make your way down to the front in just a few moments, you are going to be refilled and get a whole new batch of fresh oil. Amen? Now, we can plainly see in the story there are 10 people. Any of us in this room can make up 10 people. It's obviously these 10 have the Spirit of the Lord. They all have the light. They all have oil. They all have vessels. And even they all get sleepy. Amen? They all slept. But not all are wise. The foolish left their vessels empty. Jesus, he is coming for a renewed people. This is the key word tonight. We're going to get a renewal tonight. Every single one of us. We're going to be refreshed tonight. For those who keep their vessels full, who sleep and even rest, but are absolutely ready for his coming. And he's coming again. Amen? You see, the Lord will never leave us alone. But he always, always, every day renew us. You know, I heard many people speaking in tongues, just talking in tongues throughout the service tonight. I was like, wow, Lord, you're renewing quite a bit of them. <clears throat> but I'm not going to go into detail on how the Lord's going to renew you. That's your personal relationship with him. But it's going to include talking in tongues, right? And magnifying the Lord. I liked how you said that this morning. It's not just talking in tongues, but it's magnifying him. Because guess what? The enemy likes to intimidate or uh, uh, imitate, right? But he's not magnifying God, right? So when we talk in tongues and magnify the Lord, guess who's getting the praise? Amen, amen. Psalms 8, uh, 68, 19 says, Blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth us with benefits, even the God of our salvation. Let's first get this covered. The Bible says when you receive his spirit, you'll speak a brand new language. Amen. That's right. I talked about it this morning. You know English? It's not English. You know Spanish? Poquito en español. Todo muy bien. Gracias a Dios. Sí, que bueno. Yo soy Daniel Chicle. But if you know Spanish, it's not going to be in Spanish. It's going to be a brand new language. Amen. And this is for you. This is the promise. Amen. Amen. It'll be brand new. You'll absolutely hear it. It comes with a sound. Acts chapter 10, verse 46 says, For they heard them speak in tongues and magnify God. And to be very clear, you've got to have it. Amen. John 3, 3, Jesus replies and says, Truly, truly, he's talking to a man named Nick. Right? In the Bible, Nicodemus. 
I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He can't even see it. 3.5 goes on and says, Truly, truly, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Unless you've got both, I didn't say it, Jesus did. So if we preach that, if you've got the Holy Ghost, you're good. When Jesus comes, someone's going to have some, some, something to answer. You've got to have both. If you've not been filled with the Holy Ghost and you've been baptized in Jesus' name, Let's get the Holy Ghost. That's our ticket. Signed, sealed, delivered. Amen? Amen? If you've been filled with the Holy Ghost and not yet been baptized in water with the name of Jesus spoken over you, today's your day. I'm sure we got water around here somewhere. Right? You got to have both. That's how you get in. It's the keys to unlock the door. And Jesus gives us the keys. He's not withholding them from us. Amen? Now, see, that is the promise of God. It's the hope of heaven. And even so, come quickly, Lord. And though, it's the promise for while we yet live here on this earth. It's a promise for peace, a promise for mercy, a promise for favor, for love, and for more grace. What an amazing song. When you sing that, sis, it took me back. When, we sing, when I sing that song, Amazing Grace. There ain't nothing better but thinking about the grace of God. Taking us down the road that we once traveled before coming to Him. Thank you, Jesus. We're so, you, you, there was anointing with that song. Thank you for singing it. Who wants the promise that Jesus offers today? Amen, amen. Hallelujah. The ten people in my text today, they all woke at the voice crying, The bridegroom is coming. So we all will have ears to hear that day. But the foolish are the ones with an uneasiness throughout their lives. They woke with a frantic panic, demanding that the wise give them their oil. This is the lazy part. I think, matter of fact, they were just lazy. How do we keep our vessels full? You know what I do? And I hear Sister Gums do it all the time. She's really my encourager. And I, and I didn't say this to bless you, but I'm going to say it now. She really is my strength. I hear her talking in tongues all the time. Myself, as I'm going through the day, sometimes I'll just let myself start talking in tongues. Everybody say, wait a second. Don't you have to be under the power of God? Well, guess what? I'm under the power of God. I walk by faith. So I'm going to talk in tongues and let my body know you better get with it, right? And I'm going to let my lips give God glory. So I just talk in tongues all day long. That's how we stay renewed. Amen? Amen? You see, the oil, it's accessible to anyone. Anyone who desires to be renewed and refreshed by Jesus. Why live a distressed life anyway? Let's get our vessels filled and call it a good day. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So I'm talking about spiritual renewal. It's a very personal thing. It's a reviving a personal renewal and all we need every day is the personal renewal with Jesus. When we think of renewal or revival, often we're absolutely for it until sometimes that it gets too close to home. We get a bit nervous. Why? Because revival implies that the thing needing reviving isn't really healthy. Paramedics, they don't revive someone walking down the street that's in good health, right? right? Revival, it also implies change. And that's not always desirable because even if we're not doing well spiritually, we tend to be more comfortable with the predictable. Today, let's allow tonight to be radically unpredictable in our lives, letting the strength and the oil of renewal fill our vessels. Hallelujah. Just take a moment, lift your hands. Hallelujah, Jesus. Right now, God, I plead your blood upon our hearts. Lord, we're moments from this altar of renewal, God. Thank you, Jesus, for pointing the arrow and making it straight, God. Hallelujah, Lord, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. For those who come today and receive the Spirit of the Lord for the first time, there's usually one, one, one everywhere we go. If that's you today, this is the harvest. You are the harvest. 
You become the Lord's. You become his son, his daughter. Heaven becomes your destination. <clears throat> you are a part of the Lord's harvest, just as well as everyone else who receives his spirit. Hallelujah. Who wants to become eligible for a constant reviving? Just get the spirit of the Lord. That's the beginning. 1 Corinthians 15, 31 says, Paul, Paul said it. He says, I die daily. So today I proclaim, therefore, we must be revived daily. Amen? This is the best part because this is the continuation of our relationship with Jesus. The five wise ones from the book of Matthew, they revived or they renewed their vessels daily. They kept them full. They have a relationship. Amen? They have a relationship with Jesus. There are a few things that the Lord would have you know today. And I'm coming, I'm sliding into home base. Everybody say, whoa. The Lord gives the word. But there are a few things that the Lord will have you know today. And I would say to you this. First, thank you. The Lord would say this. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for ministering to others, whether in the house or not. Thank you for ministering to others, whether in the church or not. Thank you for fellowship amongst other brothers and sisters. Thank you for your sacrifices. The words of the Lord. You see, he's truly, he's truly been pleased by your actions. You have truly, this church, this people, you have truly pleased the Lord. He's absolutely happy with you. The Lord has ignited a call for revival in the heart of this church. It's here. And you've not displeased him. But rather, you've answered with your whole heart. I'm reminded of, of the last Saturday, I believe, in January that's coming. Your 24-hour 24 24-hour prayer chain. The answer to God is prayer. The answer to the call of God. The call is prayer. Prayer is the foundation. The effects of your prayers has the enemy running scared. And to what end? That's the question. For what purpose? God's plans, here it is, are to lift you up and to scatter the enemy. His plans include gaining the lost, talking about reviving your hearts. What, uh, what are we? We are the vessels that God uses to reach the lost, to redeem our families, to redeem our friends, and to bring people and others into the fold. The Lord has prepared today a blessing of strength for you, for every one of us. No one is completely whole. No one person is all fixed. Not a single one of us have all things perfect. We all need a spiritual renewal. This, I'm going to invite you up. Let's pray. But listen, the renewal today, it's not because you're in a bad place. It's not because of your need to be brought out of a bad decision made. The Lord today is going to renew you simply because you've pleased him. Because you have put your trust in him. You can feel it right now. The Lord is so pleased with you because you've made the commitment to serve him. You see, Jesus does not have a hammer that we often imagine ready to pounce on us with a, I told you so. Not at all. He simply desires for you to worship him and he will pour out into you. When you come down to this altar, begin to speak in tongues. Let the Lord begin to refresh you. Let the Lord renew you today. Let's all stand. Hiararo shotana mamaro